In this video, I'll be introducing the gamma function. So, <clears throat> if you're familiar with the factorial, it's pretty useful, right? 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2 times 1, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, uh, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and so on. You can do 5 fact, uh, n factorial. N factorials can be n times n minus 1 all the way up until 1. Okay, but what if I wanted to define this for general real numbers x? Okay, what if I wanted to do that? First, I'm going to define it for real numbers x greater than 0. So 4 x bigger than 0. We define gamma of x to be the integral from 0 to infinity, t to the x minus 1, e to the negative t dt. Why do we define it like this? Well, you'll see why. It's because if you imagine taking integration by parts here, I did gamma of x plus 1, okay, gamma of x plus 1 right there, t to the x, and I made u equal t to the x, so that du equals x t to the x minus 1, and dv is going to be e to the negative t, so that v is negative e to the negative t. Oh, d -d here. Why is this good? Well, if you see here, t to the x, x t to the x, n factorial is going to be n times n minus 1 factorial, right? Right there, t to the x, the t to the power of represents this, x times t to the x minus 1, x times t to the x minus 1. t to the x represents the factorial here, and e to the negative t makes it so that you can do the integral from 0 to infinity, which ends up making it 0. Okay? It makes it, uh, all the uv term cancel out to 0 which is, leaves you with x times gamma of x, which is the property we want. Okay, so that's sort of the intuition. And so let's just kind of formally prove it. Uh, again, we're going to make u equal t to the x, so that du is x t to the x minus 1 dt, and dv is going to be e to the negative t dt, so that v is negative e to the negative t dt, um, just there. Which is going to be equal to u, t to the x, v, negative e to the negative t, e, uh, t to the x, from 0 to infinity, and then minus the integral from 0 to infinity of v, e to the negative t, uh, du, which is x, a constant in this case, t to the x minus 1 dt. Okay, let's evaluate this. Okay, so that's going to be the limit. As t approaches infinity of negative e to the negative t, t to the x, minus, and then 0. Because t to, 0 to the x is 0, e to the negative 0 is 1, 0 times 1 is 0. No contradictions there. Okay, so let's just evaluate this and hope it turns out to be zero, like I told you it would. Well, guess what? I'm gonna put I'm going to ignore the negative here. I'm gonna put it in. It's gonna be negative of the limit of t to the x over e to the t by definition, which is gonna be negative the limit. As t goes to infinity of Le Hapital's rule, take the derivative of the top and the bottom, t times t to the x minus 1, e to the t. And then, that's going to be equal to the limit as t goes to infinity of Le Hapital's rule again, x times x minus 1, t to the x minus 2, e to the t. Because that fixes, 
And you can imagine carrying that down until I got the negative of the limit as t goes to infinity of x times x minus 1 all the way up until x minus, I'll call it n, where uh, minus floor function x. Okay, you go all the way up until floor function of x, t to the floor function x minus 1, which is going to be t to the power of something that is less than 0, right? This is less than 0. So I'm going to move it to the denominator with e to the t. So I have e to the t times t to the 1 minus floor function um, Four function. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, I meant x minus. So that'll be. Sorry, I should do t to the. Okay, so it's gonna be one. So it's gonna be times t to the floor function x. X minus floor function x minus one. Move that to the bottom to become 1 plus 4 function x minus x, which is going to be greater than 0. And so I have t to the something greater than 0 times e to the t on the denominator, constant on top. That's going to give us 0. Negative 0 is 0. And so that evaluates to 0 for x bigger than 0. Okay. And the 4 function basically means round down. Okay, so we get that this right here is just the integral. x times the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the negative t, t to the x minus 1 dt, which is x gamma of x. Okay, so let's evaluate gamma at some value. Gamma of 1. Okay, it's going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t, t to the 0 constant. Okay, that's just going to be negative e to the negative t evaluated from 0 to infinity. Very easy to check. That's 0. Uh, it's 1, sorry. Okay, gamma of 2 is, by this, gamma of x plus 1 equals x times gamma of x is going to be 1 times gamma of 1, which is 1. Gamma of 3 is going to be 2 times gamma of 2, which is 2 times 1, which is 2 factorial. Gamma of 4 is going to be 3 times gamma of 3, which is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 3 factorial. Gamma of 5 is going to be 4 times gamma of 4, which is going to be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 4 factorial. Gamma of n, an integer, a positive integer, is going to be equal to n minus 1 factorial. That's it. Okay? That's the property we wanted. It's very heavily related to the factorial. And I'm going to prove uh, one more thing in this video. Then in the next video, I'll evaluate it at 1 half. Or maybe in this video. I'll probably do it in this video, honestly. Okay, so. Uh, I claim that gamma of x is also equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of negative log of x to the negative log of t to the x minus 1 dt. Okay? Why is that? Because if I let u equal negative log of t, meaning that uh, t equals e to the negative u, and therefore dt equals negative e to the negative u, guess what I get here? I get negative, the integral from uh, infinity until 0. Switch those, get rid of that negative. 0 to infinity of, and then you're going to have right in there, u to the x minus 1 times e to the negative u du. 
Okay. And so it's just gamma function rewritten. Yes, I have time to do gamma of one half. Okay, gamma of one half. It's going to be the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative t, t to the negative one half dt. If I make the substitution u squared equals t, so that dt is 2u du. Okay, let's. Oh, sorry. u squared. Yeah, u squared equals t, so that dt is t u du. So that I have 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t, e to the negative u squared, sorry. And then t, which is u squared, so that's going to be u to the minus 1 times 2u to u, all those cancel out, du. Okay, that, this, is an, uh, this is an even function, so that 2 can go right down there to create a minus infinity, which is the square root of pi. Okay, you can check Dr. Pi's uh, video on this. On that integral, e to the negative t squared dt. Okay. Uh, also, we can extend this below zero by using the, the relation gamma of z plus 1 equals z times gamma of z by then saying that gamma of z equals gamma of z plus 1 over z. Okay. That'll extend it so that gamma of, say, negative a half is going to be gamma of one half over a half over a half, which is going to be two square root of pi. So I think, actually, here, I may have done something wrong, but, uh, yeah, we're done. And also, gamma of, say, negative three halves would be gamma of negative 1 half over negative 1 half, which is going to be negative 4 square root of pi, and you can carry that back, so on and so on. Thank you.